Explained by the Billy Meyer contacts, mysteries, myths, legends, conspiracy theories, historical inaccuracies, and more. Compiled by David Chance, revised October 18, 2023. Earth C also flat, Earth theory C also ice, age C also magnetic poles, North Pole or South Pole. Contact report 045. Sure, but how old do you think the Earth's age is? Our scientific experts are the clever ones who walk our Earth with their wisdom. They indicate the age of the Earth with at most approximately 5 billion, 5,000, thousand, thousand years. Since my great journey with you and Ptah, however, I have somewhat changed my opinion. You have let me see the most different stars and planets, heard the most different stages of development, and that one has to calculate their basic age differently, namely from the formation of primordial matter, which the earthly scientists do not do, however. If I now look at them all together and compare them with the Earth, then I surpass our scientists in their assumption of time by far. Just recently I thought about it and added it all up, and then I came across the number 640. So according to my calculation, the Earth would have to be about 640 billion, 640,000,000 thousand years old, calculated from the first formation of primordial matter, from which the S-Sol system and finally the Earth developed, which exists as a fixed planet for about 6.4 billion, 6,400,000 thousand dollars. Years and since then has been classified as the actual course of evolution in every respect. The age of Earth is calculated from the origin of the first primeval matter production, from which the Earth then developed over 646 billion, 646,000, thousand, thousand years, whereby the existence of the solid planetary body is given as a seething, glowing, and viscous mass with about 46 billion years. The shape of the fortress of the planet, however, when the first mountains began to form in their origin, is said to have formed about 6 billion 6 thousand 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 years ago, while the first flora-based life originated about 4.8 billion 4 thousand 800 thousand thousand years ago. Billy. According to our most accurate calculations, it is. Our very precise calculations have shown that the Earth has a basic age of 646 billion 646,000 thousand thousand years since the first formation of primeval matter, so you have only miscalculated in a six. The statement that the Earth is a solid planet at the age of about 4.8 billion, 4,800 thousand thousand years is correct, although this planetary solidification was preceded by many millions of years of actual development. In less than half a century, the Earth's surface alone, of all the continents that formed about 4.4 billion 4,400,000 years ago, has lost so much fertile land that nature would need several million years to make it fertile again on its own. Contact Report 051 the exact age of the Earth's existence is 646 billion, 646 thousand, thousand, thousand years, calculated from the time when the first gas atoms were formed, merged, and later collected. In ignorance of the real events surrounding planetary formation, the earthly scientists calculate all the relevant concerns and false values Consequently, they achieve endless false results, and they do not want to be instructed. For centuries, they have tried to calculate and prove all things according to their very faulty mathematics, but they rarely achieve truthful results, even in relation to the real distances to the stars. Nevertheless, they claim that their calculations correspond to the truth, even if they often have to correct them after centuries which is very difficult for them because they do not want to admit their mistakes to the masses. They are and remain simply the incorrigible know-it-alls. 
The person asking these questions is obviously caught up in earthly astronomy data and the like, and consequently cannot confront the truth. Obviously, he does not know the speed changes in the orbit around the central sun of the constellation times, which also includes the Earth and the whole system, so he probably calculates the orbit with only 25,729 instead of 25,160 Earth years. The fact that he still refers to scientific principles in this is probably a little too much, for how can one presume such things if one has based one's knowledge only on assumptions that do not even come close to the truth? The fact that the miscalculations concerning the vernal equinox, as this is called here, make up only a fraction of a second of arc and consequently only two Earth years for the total cycle is directly an incentive to laugh. Here, the human being of the Earth does not even reckon with their time and has interspersed it with serious miscalculations, and there they want to indulge in things of which they know and understand even less than their own existence as a material life form. Contact Report 055 Well, you said that Earth was an evolutionary planet. In what way is it that? As you know, any form of life is subject to, or is incumbent on, constant change, a change from an evolutive point of view. As now the Earth itself embodies a form of life, it is subject to the same law of evolution, along with all its enlivened forms. The natural evolutive path of all life forms is universally uniform, and so is also any evolution on the Earth, or with the Earth itself, which is also assigned to a waking or slumbering period like any other life form. But it is now the case that the Earth, as a living and life form carrying planet, is not able to slumber in its entire mass, because this would destroy all forms of life. Therefore, it lies in slumber only partially, that is, by area. This happens because it, the Earth, together with extraterrestrial influences, causes temperature and climate changes all over the planet or in large areas, which are then covered with very dense ice masses. These then initiate the actual transformation, for through such a glaciation of large areas, all forms of life and the earthly regions have to adapt to the new conditions so that they are slowly transformed into other external forms, Animal, plant, and human beings, and also the planet itself, go through a process of transformation that causes them to evolve more highly. For evolution can never be changed into retrogressive forms, but always only forward. Which means that a transformation is only ever to occur towards a higher level, except when a decline occurs by destruction, etc. If, therefore, the Earth evolves normally, then only forward and higher, which means that, along with it, also the life forms develop higher in all their most diverse forms. Through such a global evolution, plants, animals, and human beings change into new and higher forms. This means that, for example, a beautiful flower transforms into a more beautiful one and is refined, due to the evolutionary influences of the Earth itself, whose evolution itself takes place through the small and large glacial periods. Contact Report 057 But tell me, do you know how old the SOL system is? The Earth is a middle-aged planet with 646 billion years since its first primeval matter agglomeration of ultrafine gas. Other planets are a little older and are slowly disintegrating, while Jupiter and Saturn only develop into planets if they ever do, before the whole system disappears again. The age of the Sun amounts to 810 billion and 73 million years, whereby this information regarding the age is based again on the first origin of the Ewer gas which formed at that time in the constantly changing and the becoming and passing, as well as the again forming of the aligned universal material belt. 
Contact Report 217. Recently, we talked about the primeval times of the Earth, and the issue arose, which Simya Say also once talked about, that at least once on the Earth, there had been a global glaciation, i.e. a total global ice age, which dates back about 600 million years. At the same time, the entire equatorial belt should have also been covered by many meters of thick ice and by enormous glaciers. This, along with the Great Ice Ages and the Small Ice Ages that repeatedly moved across the planet since ages ago and will also continue to do so in the future. Through the total glaciation of global expansion, the entire Earth became a giant ball of ice, i.e. an actual ice planet. In addition, I ask you, since you are also a geologist and an expert in terms of the ice ages and so on, how the Earth was able to turn into an ice planet at all, and how the enormous masses of ice were able to melt and then disappear again. At the earliest times, the planet was, nevertheless, a giant glowing ball before it solidified and formed actual land masses, on which then, in the end, Mountains raise themselves through inner earth movements and processes, etc. It corresponds to the truth that at early times on the earth, the ice regions and glaciers had advanced into the tropical zones and also forced the equatorial regions and even the entire planet under a mantle of ice that was many meters thick. Now, so that the earth could free itself again from its enormous mantle of ice, the elementary, Bubbling, inner life of the planet itself was decisive, namely the tremendous natural power of volcanism through which the tremendous heat was generated, which eventually brought the ice crust of the earth back to melting. But in addition to the lava and the heat, the volcanoes also eject huge amounts of the finest dust particles, that is to say ash particles and so on and so forth, along with enormous masses of carbon dioxide, and these very factors are the ones that ensure that the heat of the sunlight is trapped in the atmosphere. But primarily, it is carbon dioxide that is decisive for this heat effect. For throughout the entire global ice age, which lasted on Earth for 12.47 million years, this gathered together an unimaginable mass in the atmosphere, heating it to about 57 degrees which entailed that a tremendous global greenhouse effect arose through which the enormous masses of ice slowly began to melt. By what means the global freezing dissolved up to the small areas at the North Pole and the South Pole, as well as in isolated mountain areas, etc. This was also the case on the ground, which took place about 600 million years ago. Of course, Immense layers of clouds originated from the slow evaporation of the masses of ice, which surrounded the entire Earth as a closed cloud cover, and which, in turn, led to a renewed and even much more extreme climate change. Then, after many millions of years, it began to rain for the first time on Earth, and indeed in such immense masses that everything was set under water. This tremendous time of rain, during which the waters fell like a flood from the clouds to the ground, lasted for 142 years without interruption. And of course, new evaporations of the falling down water masses took place again and again, by what means the cloud formations were continuously fed, while the powerful volcanoes naturally remained active and constantly ejected new carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The flood-like falling down water masses combined in the atmosphere with this carbon dioxide, forming acid rain, from which then, over the course of time, natural lime developed on the earth. This was the development of the earth in relation to the total global freezing, which then also firstly formed the actual origin for the original emergence of the first micro-life forms of a single-celled kind, from which over the course of millions of years and centuries, life forms of the water, land, and air evolved up to the higher kinds, after which then the earth human emerged from the whole thing 
and evolved over many depths and heights to the current state. Until the global ice age around 600 million years ago, only thermal life forms, that is to say thermal bacteria, existed on the earth in the scorching heat of the magma and lava, and these life forms were partially expelled from the hot springs of above-ground geysers, as well as from small or larger black funnels or chimneys rising high up at the bottom of the sea. And to be sure, along with the other primitive forms, from which, over the course of time, new unicellular life forms could evolve, which settled in the sands of the shores of the seas and other bodies of water and evolved under or in the sand to multicellular life forms. But at the same time, comets as well as meteors and asteroids, as well as interstellar clouds of microbes played a very important role. Once these came into the immediate vicinity of the Earth and fell down upon this, thereby bringing their microbes, etc., to the planet, which combined in part with the Earth's already developed life forms of a similar kind and thereby created new life, or else life forms that were independently brought from space emerged from these. But in relation to the insemination of the Earth with respect to fauna and flora, it must be clearly said that what primarily relates to this did not proceed from the planet itself, but resulted through the inclusions from outer space, and to be sure, through comets, meteors, asteroids, dust particles, and even through the clouds of chemical elements drifting through free space, as well as clouds of microbes, through which all the bacteria, fungi, lichens, mosses, viruses, and protozoa of various genera and species were brought to the Earth. The Earth human first emerged much later out of new amino acid connections, etc., which resulted from the decayed substances of plants and animals. Contact Report 826 but to say something against it is like water being carried into the Rhine, no matter whether it is earthly water or whether it was already there at the beginning of the formation of the earth, as it really was, because it was brought here by gas and dust and further by asteroids from outer space during the formation of the earth, before the earth then continued to develop itself. Even now, if I deviate from what I have actually been talking about, the earthlings are still asking themselves how the water came to the earth. Contact report 829. The planet itself, which on the one hand is much older than 4.5 billion 4,500 thousand thousand years, which science assumes because it can only determine the age of those things it finds in the earth's crust, but not what constitutes the actual inner life of the planet itself. This is billions of years earlier than the Earth's crust, in which only millions of years old things are stored, but nothing of the origin, which goes back to several billion years earlier than is claimed. Contact Report 846 Now, the age of the waters on the Earth, however, is, this is probably still the same question that has been asked by human beings since ancient times what apparently does not want to be understood, has been produced by this planet itself to a large extent, as is the case with practically every planet. Furthermore, I have learned from Svath that the waters were also brought to Earth from Sol space by comets, asteroids, meteors, as well as ice clouds, of which our astronomers, etc., still know nothing. It should be said, however, that the first waters developed independently and completely naturally from the planet itself, as a result of the gluten and heat of the emerging world body. Heat and warmth led to the evaporation of the developing heat gases, which entered the empty space of the developing world body in gaseous form and formed the very first atmosphere, that is to say, a gas atmosphere. Further geological processes took place over a long period of time with regard to new evolutionary and beneficial changes, so that everything continued to change, and an atmosphere and hydrogen developed over billions of years, as did plants and thus also oxygen, which combined with hydrogen, and further also life, which could move independently, etc., as I learned from Svath. 
Contact Report 865. As far as I know, the actual Earth's crust, mantle, or crust is the layer of the Earth that lies directly beneath the surface. The Earth's crust is the outer, solid layer of the Earth, but it extends down to a depth of about 30 kilometers, but up to 70 km depending on the case. This is actually normally the separating layer between the Earth's crust, which is about 20 kilometers or 30 km to 70 kilometers deep, and the Earth's mantle after which the so-called mantle begins. Below this is the solid to viscoplastic mantle down to a depth of about 3,000 kilometers, followed by the liquid core. The Earth itself rotates, but its stability is somewhat disturbed by the over-exploitation of the planet by the Earthlings. The Earth is actually made up of 14 main Earth plates, as Svath said, so 1. The North American plate. 2 the South American Plate. 3. The Pacific Plate. 4. The Nazca Plate. 5. The Eurasian Plate. 6. The African Plate. 7. The Indo-Australian Plate. 8. The Philippine Plate. 9. The Cocos Plate 10. The Antarctic Plate 11. The Caribbean Plate 12. The Iranian Plate, the Arabian Plate 14. The Arctic Plate. There are also various smaller ones, but they are not of great importance. It is still to be explained that the Earth's crust, that is to say the uppermost mantle, is called lithosphere, because this, that is to say, this consists of several large and many small fragments, which are actually called continental plates, or lithospheric plates, or tectonic plates. The Earth's core consists of the metals iron and nickel which look like an icicle structure, as I could see together with Svath, whereas the Earth's core itself consists of an outer core more than 2,000 kilometers thick. Due to their conditions, the Earth's layers have different states of aggregation, solid and liquid, depending on their position. But the Earth also stores enormous quantities of water, especially in the mantle, which are bound up in rocks such as ringwoodite or brucite. According to Svath, these are such huge quantities of water as all the oceans on the Earth's surface have together, although it should also be said that the oceanic crust is only about 8 to 22 kilometers thick. It is also to be said that the upper mantle of the Earth is actually made up of rock, which consists mainly of minerals called olivine and pyroxene or peridotite or something like that, these substances consisting of the elements magnesium, oxygen, and silicon, then also sulfur and other light elements. Under the rock layer of the Earth's crust, precisely in the Earth's mantle, there are already high temperatures, which Svath measured of over a thousand degrees Celsius, whereby there was also a very high pressure, which together causes the rock to melt and become viscous, namely magma, which expands and pushes upwards. Warm matter, Svath further explained, has a lower density than colder matter, consequently it rises and moves upwards. Therefore, he explained, this is also the cause of the movement in the Earth's mantle, that is, the area from below the Earth's crust, which continues to the Earth's core. The Earth was formed much earlier than science claims, which puts it at about 4.54 billion years ago, further claiming that it took about 150 million years or so for the liquid rock on the surface to solidify and form the Earth's first crust. Svath, however, said that the Earth as a real planet had already been formed from 7.5 billion years ago.